short. Hey, everyone. Yeah, I'm <laughs> um, My name is V Prentice. I'm the co president of Outlaws, the LGBTQIA uh, student organization here at Yale Law School. So um, I just want to welcome all of you, especially folks who are not um, in the law school community directly. Um, welcome to the law school and welcome to this event. Uh, wonderful set of panelists here. Um, put together in large part thanks to the U.S. Attorney's Office uh, for the District of Connecticut. Um, so thanks to them for all their hard work. Um, and finally, after the panel, there'll be a little Q&A, and then we'll move over to uh, room 22, 122, just across the hall, uh, for a little light reception and continue the conversation there. So um, thanks again for coming. Uh, this is uh, David Heath uh, from the U.S. Attorney's Office. We'll kick it off. Thank you, V. I'm uh, David Heath, the LGBT uh, program manager for the District of Connecticut. And um, look, I know everyone involved in this event is so thrilled that we've been able to assemble such an outstanding group of panelists for this discussion today. Our moderator, Janice Astor del Valle, will introduce our panel. But first, a few words about Janice. <clears throat> she is a Latina lesbian writer, performer, and filmmaker who uses her plays and films to promote discourse about and foster understanding of LGBT issues and cultural diversity. She has performed at numerous venues in and outside New York, including here, the New Yorican Poets Cafe, Hartford Stage, Yale, Dartmouth, Smith, Wesleyan, and UMass. Her work is published in six anthologies, including Bullying, Replies, Rebuttals, Confessions, and Catharsis. Janice currently serves as visiting assistant professor at SUNY Purchase. She was previously on the board of Love Makes a Family and was featured with her wife in LMF's documentary, Marriage Makes a Word of Difference. Janice and her wife were legally married in 2008, and they reside in New Haven with their cat and dog. <laughs> so, on behalf of the U.S. Attorney's Office, and the Department of Justice, I want to thank Yale Law School, and especially V. Prentice, who you just met, Xander Tabloff, and uh, everyone with the Yale Outlaws for hosting this event today. Also, thank you Dean Mike Thompson, Janet Conroy, Caitlin Thomas, and Brian Pause for helping us organize this event and for making it available via web stream. Um, and at the U.S. Attorney's Office, I want to thank Felice Duffy, Sarah La Nagala, Lee Gronbach, Judy Doria, Carrie Quinn, Susan Feaster, Michelle McConaughey, uh, Caroline Icare, and a very special thank you uh, for all of the guidance and support throughout this project to the person I will introduce to you now, the Acting United States Attorney for the District of Connecticut, Deirdre M. Daly. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you all for being here, and thank you, David. Um, I am the acting U.S. attorney here in this state. Uh, we essentially rec represent the United States in criminal and civil matters in federal court in Connecticut. We're a group of 65 lawyers, most of whom work here in New Haven. We also have a group in Bridgeport and a group in our Hartford office. From the perspective of the criminal work we do, it's wide ranging. We prosecute murder, narcotics, violent crime, uh, national security matters, uh, cyber crime, child pornography, human trafficking, civil rights, and on and on. But today we're here from the civil perspective. In civil, with respect to civil matters, we represent the United States in any matter in which the United States is a party, is a civil litigant, either a plaintiff or a defendant. And that, as I say, is what brings us here today, because Assistant United States Attorney David Nelson represented the government in the Pedersen case, which you're going to hear a lot about today. The government's thinking about marriage equality has evolved and you're gonna hear from the president himself in a few moments about his own evolution in terms of his personal thinking about marriage equality. But we today would like to recognize particularly the people on this panel who have been at the forefront 
of engagement and advocacy on issues relating to fair treatment and equality with respect to marriage. And we're very honored to have them here today. So thank you from the outset. Um, I would also like to recognize David Heath, um, who spent a lot of time thanking other people, but anybody who's really close to this knows that David almost singularly put this event together. It was his idea, and he put almost all the work into it. So thank you very much, David. We're very appreciative. Finally, it is my great honor uh, to introduce to you the President of the United States, Barack Obama, and also our leader in the Department of Justice, Eric Holder. I have to tell you, as I said, I've, I've been going through an evolution on this issue. Um, I've always been adamant that uh, gay and lesbian uh, Americans should be treated fairly and equally. Uh, and that's why, in addition to everything we've done in this administration, rolling back Don't Ask, Don't Tell, uh, so that uh, you know, outstanding Americans can serve our country, uh, whether it's no longer defending the Defense Against Marriage Act, which uh, tried to federalize uh, what has historically been state law. Uh, I've stood on the side of broader equality for uh, the LGBT community. Um, and I had hesitated on gay marriage, uh, in part because I thought civil unions would be sufficient, that that was something that would give people hospital visitation rights and uh, other uh, elements that we take for granted. Uh, and uh, I was sensitive to the fact that uh, for a lot of people, you know, the, the word marriage was something that evokes very powerful traditions, religious beliefs, and so forth. Um, but I have to tell you that over the course of uh, several years, as I talk to friends and family and neighbors, uh, when I think about uh, members of my own staff who are in incredibly committed monogamous relationships, same-sex relationships, who are raising kids together. Uh, when I think about uh, those soldiers or airmen or marines or uh, sailors who are out there fighting on my behalf uh, and yet feel constrained, even now that Don't Ask, Don't Tell is gone because uh, they're not able to uh, commit themselves in a marriage. Uh, at a certain point, I've just concluded that, um, for me personally, it is important for me to go ahead and affirm that uh, I think same-sex couples should be able to get married. Good afternoon. I, I'm sorry I can't be with you today, but I appreciate this opportunity to join Deidre Daly, her colleagues from the United States Attorney's Office, and our hosts here at Yale Law School in welcoming you to this important discussion. Now, I want to thank each of our panelists for lending their voices, their stories, and their expertise to today's forum. And I'd like to thank all of you for taking the time to be here to discuss and advance our ongoing efforts to build a more perfect union forge a more just society and ensure equal opportunity and treatment for every American. Earlier this summer, with the Supreme Court's decision in Windsor to strike down a key part of the Defense of Marriage Act, our nation took a historic step forward. The court's ruling was an enormous triumph for the cause of equal protection under law, and it was a major victory for committed and loving couples throughout the country who have stood up for equal treatment for children whose parents had been denied the recognition that they deserved, and for millions of others, including many of you, who have worked tirelessly from our courtrooms to our schools, workplaces, and city streets to combat discrimination and to safeguard the rights of all. The Justice Department has been working closely with its partner agencies to implement and to make real the promise of the Windsor decision. 
Already, the federal government has announced the extension of significant benefits to members of same-sex marriages, including health insurance and other key benefits for federal employees and their families. We are implementing a uniform internal revenue service policy that will recognize all same-sex married couples for federal tax purposes, as well as a policy making certain that for purposes of, of immigration law, same-sex and opposite-sex marriages will be treated exactly the same. In addition, members of the military who are in same-sex marriages will now receive all benefits available to opposite-sex married couples. And two weeks ago, I was pleased to announce that the President has directed the executive branch to stop enforcing statutory language that had restricted certain spousal benefits for military veterans to those in opposite-sex marriages. Now, there is no question that these initial changes will make a meaningful, positive difference in the lives of many. But they are only the beginning. The Department of Justice is continuing to coordinate with other federal agencies to ensure the timely and the smooth implementation of every part of the court's ruling. We are committed, as I know all of you are committed, to fighting for equality, for opportunity, and for justice for everyone in this country. And today, as you gather to discuss recent developments, explore ways to carry this work into the future, and strive to build the better world and the brighter future that all of our citizens deserve, I want you to know that we'll continue to rely on your passion, your determination, and your principled advocacy. Now, I recognize that our nation's journey is not yet complete, and a great deal of work remains to be done. But if, as they say, what's past is prologue, then I believe there's good reason for confidence in where your efforts will take us from here. I look forward to all that we will achieve together in the months and years ahead. And I wish you all a most productive discussion.